Hey everybody, what's happening? Uh, gonna go over some uh, Square today, SQ. Thoughts on that? I entered that trade yesterday, had a good day in Square today. Uh, gonna talk a little bit about structure and also going to talk about exactly why I got involved in Square, what it is that I was looking at on the chart which interested me. And I'm also going to, if I have time, it might get a little bit long, but if I have time, I'm gonna talk about Avenger, A-V-G-R which, uh, man, I mean, it took a bath today, but uh, I think I might see something really nice developing with that. And uh, possibly even an advanced pattern called a cipher pattern actually hidden within this entire chart to show you also the power of advanced patterns that tend to form through periods of consolidation. So the market is in consolidation about 70% of the time and in trend about 30% of the time. The methodology that I'm using to get involved in this trade with Square specifically has to do with the trend following um, methodology. So it really doesn't apply to markets that are in consolidation. Uh, this is a, in a trending market right now, uh, at least with this last leg that I'm looking at. And we're going to talk about that and exactly why I got involved in that trade. But overall, um, let's, uh, let's just get right into it. Um, looking at the daily, what I like to use the daily for is just to get a good overall view of exactly what the market is doing. A lot of other people will use the daily to make sound decisions in terms of trading, what they're looking at and and so on and so forth. And uh, I, I don't use it for that. I use the one hour and four hour periods for my analysis. Uh, daily is just a good broad overview. And if I use it for that, I can see a very nice strong bullish move up here, which I think we can all agree on. Get a high right here. And then all of a sudden, in fact, I'm gonna move it to a four hour because it makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, four hour provides a little bit more detail, but the four hour and the daily are very similar when it comes down to it. So I have a high right here. I have a lower high here. I have a little fake out to the upside and then it, the trend resumes down here. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. And all that is followed also by a lower low, lower low. That fake to the upside, lower low lower low lower low so this whole move right here we can all agree is a very bearish move it's trending lower with that okay so if i look at the very bottom right here one thing that is of interest as well is if i zoom in on it right here you have what's formed right here called a double bottom okay that low is tested right here comes back i'm not looking at these candles right here because those are high candles those are uh, i'm not concerned about those i'm looking at my lowest closes right here Closed right here, came back up, closed here again. I have space in between right there. It's a technical double bottom, sometimes indicating a change in trend. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Now, look at these highs right here. And mainly, I'm really enjoying this high right here. But look what happened right here. And if you, if you look at it from a different angle right here, too, it's kind of like a ball damp bouncing down the stairs. Bounce, 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 all the way on down until we get right here and this is what really interested me right here is that we actually this little high right here is higher than this high and this high right here is higher than this high and then this is the level that i was really happy to get above with this break to the upside right here and we're trending higher right here just by those series of higher highs this is a trending higher line right here so i'm happy about that and what i'm really looking at right here is this um if i draw a line it's your your areas that are the best structure support are going to be your areas uh, that are most recent so what i really like looking at right here is this high right here i'm going to draw a line right there that is a line of resistance for me because price action came up here it was rejected came back down came back up here again, it's rejected again, came down, came back up here, rejected again, uh, dropped down just a little bit. And then this is the big thing right here that I want everybody to pay attention to. It broke above and it closed above this line. It was rejected once, twice, three times. On the fourth time, it broke above and it closed above. That's a huge thing for me that I look at with my trading in terms of an opportunity. And I'll show you why. I know that, like I just said, this area of structure resistance right here is the most pertinent to this move. And by breaking above and closing above from a technical perspective, regardless of any fundamentals or whatever the case may be, that the market has already signaled that it wants higher. Now, what I know about how markets move is that 
once we hit structures uh, or areas of resistance and they break past that resistance, now it starts to act as support. And you can see that that's what it did. It, it closed above right here and then it came down and it bounced off that area just a little bit. And then it's, we're now in the middle of a retracement um, from that high right there. But that does not negate what happened right here in terms of the signal of the, of the market wanting higher. So this first move right here, this break above, close above, the most recent level of resistance, and now we're in a retracement. Now I'm hungry looking for a trade right here, and here's what I'm looking for. I'm going to move it to a one hour, and I'm looking for what's called a higher high, higher close candle. Here's that break above, close above the line, and now I'm looking for my lowest close candle, and I'm looking for a higher high, higher close candle compared to that lower lowest close candle in order to get long, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by all that wordy nonsense is that I'm looking for my lowest close. That's not going to work. This is a, my lowest close candle right here. Now, in order for me to get long right here, in all honesty, I thought it was going to turn around right here, but I waited because it didn't give me the signal, is this is my lowest close candle right here. I'm looking for a green candle to come along that's going to close higher than the highest high on this candle. So the highest high on this candle is 78.75. I'm looking for a green candle to come along that closes above 78.75. That's my signal to get long. And did I get it here? I absolutely did not. So I didn't get involved in the trade. And it's real nice that I did it because look what happened. It dropped off again yesterday until it found support right here. Why did it find support right here? Well, if I look left, I just switched it to a four hour. If I look left right here, look at this area of support right here. If I draw a line right where it closed right there, look where that line magically comes into play. It's found support here before, here once, here once, here, and here, once, twice, three, four, five times, almost six times right here, kind of did, close enough. And it found support there again. So um, the market remembers, market remembers. And so going back to a one hour, now this is my lowest close candle. I'm looking for a candle that's going to be green, that's going to break above, that's gonna be a higher high, higher close candle compared to this candle right here. This close is at 74.12. The high of this candle is 74.51. I need a green candle to come along that's going to be higher than 74.51 on the close. It's all about the close. This candle didn't do it. This candle didn't do it. This did not do it. This one did. Right at the final minute, I think I, I placed my order with about two or three minutes remaining in market hours uh, yesterday. And that candle closed at 74.68. So that's my higher, high, higher close candle. Market opened today, it pulled back a little bit, and I see that happen more often than not. I'm very indirectly indirectly uh, back testing that to see if there's any validity to, um, once you get that higher, high, higher close candle, to hold off and wait for that pullback and then enter right there, just to give you a little bit better of an entry price before things start going uh, north, which is the way we went today. Uh, but I did. I got in at uh, 74.64, I believe, was my purchase price, and right at the end there. And uh, now we had a good day today, and I already cash positive on the trade. Once that happens, once that higher high, higher close candle happens, I can immediately put a stop below my lowest candle right there. But I wanted to get a little bit lower right there and give it some room to breathe right there. But what I'm saying with this higher high, higher close candle is that this entire pullback right here is complete. That's what I'm saying by that, that I am looking for that uh, price action to start heading back north. If I'm on the wrong side of this, if I'm on the wrong side of the trade, I don't want to be in the trade past that, and I'm going to go ahead and get stopped out. And that's just the cost of doing business. It's not a big deal. This methodology does not work every time, but boy, does it work very well. Um, like I said, it's already working today, and I think we're going to see some good things with this trade, hopefully. But you know, nobody really knows at the end of the day. So what I also know before I even place the trade is I can provide a price target of exactly where I'm looking at, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Some people online will say, oh, there's no way to tell where the price action is going to go. You just wait until you get 10% and start peeling off and... I disagree with that, and I'll show you exactly why. And it's again, it's from a purely technical perspective. Uh, if I'm looking at things right here, if um, I can go ahead and I can make a retracement from the lowest low to the highest high right here, and uh, I can see that this first retracement right here almost hit the 382. And I know for my Ameren trade 
that with the 382, that tends to indicate trend continuation. Come up just shy of that. Doesn't always have to hit a 382. 382 tends to indicate trend continuation in strongly trending markets. It can turn around right here as well. Mention that higher high, higher close. So I'm already looking at what's called an AB equals CD pattern. So what I want to do is I want to clone this um, line right here, make a direct copy of it, and I'm going to put it right over here, right at my lowest low right here on this first retracement, and that's what I'm looking at. So if I had to label all these things, this is my A point, this is my B point, this is my C point, and D, which is where I'm expecting price action to go based off of all the structure that I just we just talked about, that's my D point, also known as my sell point, okay? So think about what we have so far. We have this first leg right here. We have a retracement almost at the 382. Price action continued. Break above, close above the most recent structure resistance. Now we're in a pullback with a higher high, higher close candle. That's the entry. This is my risk to the downside right here. I'm putting a stop. Uh, I think it was about 72, 60s or something like that is what I, what I eventually did. And now I'm expecting price action to go ahead and continue north to that area right there. What um, I can also do is draw what's called a Fibonacci extension from the lowest low to the highest high of my A to B move, and then back on in. And wouldn't you know that, that D point completion is coming in almost exactly at my 1618 extension, one of my main Fibonacci extension numbers at about 95.64 per share. That's not going to be where my sell is going to be. I'm going to front load my order just a little bit at about, uh, say, about maybe about right there. Why am I going to front load it? Because I want to make sure that I get filled. Because I want to make sure that it doesn't fall just short of the 1618 and uh, doesn't get filled and starts to drop off and I miss out on getting filled and now my profits are getting eaten up. I want to put it just a little bit ahead of my price target uh, just to make sure that I get filled on that. Okay. So I'm taking pure measured moves from this AB and cloning it, making a CD, and I've been taking a purely mathematical measurement, two completely separate methodologies with this, and these both are lining up near perfectly. In fact, that's about as perfect as I think it can get, right at about 95.64. More importantly, if I go ahead and I draw a line right at that 1618, and I start looking left, I can see that I'm coming up really close on those all-time highs that we hit back in October. And uh, that is where I'm going to look to exit the trade. Going to be roughly right around there. So um, that's what I got going on with that trade. If you go back and look at the Amron video that I did, it's, it was the exact same thing. A, B, move, retracement, break above, close above, wait for the pullback, enter on the higher, high, higher close. I have my um, Fibonacci extension drawn in. I've got my harmonic measurements drawn in as well. Very simple, very simple stuff. And uh, I'm excited about this trade because like I said, the main thing right here, it's already signaled higher. So the market has already shown that it wants higher. Now we just have to do what uh, people in this world just have a very difficult time doing and that's waiting. Um, oh, one thing that I also want to show you too is I like coming in here with a really nice risk reward profile. And what I mean by that is if I enter at 74.64, and about right, trying to draw that in. There we go. About about right there. I'm risking to the downside about 2.67%. I know based off of structure analysis that if it gets down to this level, 72.63 or so, 2.67% loss. I don't want to be in this trade. Okay, definitively. Now my profit target is going to be up here, so I stand to gain almost 28% from this trade. My risk reward profile is almost 10 and a half to one. That's a pretty good risk reward profile. Um, I'd say anything using this methodology, at least a one to one, is going to work pretty well because more often than not, greater than 50% of the time, what's happening right here is going to work in your direction. One and a half to one risk reward profile is going to be even better. But almost a 10 and a half to one, I'm risking 2.67% to the downside while looking to make almost 28% to the upside. That's pretty darn good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that trade. That's what's going on with that. What I also want to show. So what's called a cipher pattern in here. And uh, I'm going to go over this really quick because I would like to touch on AVGR and I don't want this video to go too long here. Um, 
So in areas of consolidation or times of consolidation, we're, we're otherwise known as trading sideways. Sometimes we see these advanced patterns pop up. I just looked at this right here. This is what's called a cipher pattern. And condition number one, first thing I got to do is be able to know how to draw a um, what's called a, a uh, impulse leg. And my impulse leg is going to be from my lowest low right here to my highest high right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure that. And that measurement right there is going to be from here to here and it just taps that 382 okay that's condition one for cipher pattern at least a 382 retracement not greater than a 618 retracement and closing below the 618 okay my second measurement is going to be an extension of that first leg right there and it has to be at least a 127 extension so i'm going to draw a fibonacci extension from my lowest low here to my highest high right here and back on in and it look at that it just taps the 127 extension now keep in mind all this Fibonacci measurement is all mathematically based okay so if anybody's controlling the markets out there if the markets all rigged like you hear some people saying if they're doing that then they're doing it with mathematical precision it's pretty impressive so I get a 127 extension that's the second um, rule of engagement if you will for a what's called a uh, cipher pattern. My third and final, which is also going to be my entry price, is going to be a Fibonacci retracement at the very bottom here to the very top right here. And my price to enter is going to be at the 786 retracement right here at 7140. That would have been my buy. My stop would have gone below right here. This most recent level right here, if you really want to do it, you kind of got to get below this structure level right here, but let's just say right here. Okay. And then my profit target is going to be a 382 retracement of this final move right here. And about 70% of the time, once you enter into this trade, you're going to hit that profit target right there at the 382. Came down, came up, definitely touched the 382, and then pulled on back. OK, so that would have been 70% uh, of the time where your profit target would have been hit. If I can draw this pattern in, it looks like this. This is my X to A, A to B, B to C, D point completion was right here. Even if I entered the trade right here, my stop loss is right here. Even though price action dropped right down here, I wouldn't have been stopped out. I definitely would have made money on it. That's called a cipher pattern. It's one of the advanced patterns. You have ciphers, you have bat patterns. Gartley patterns and butterfly patterns and it's not me drawing a bunch of squiggly lines up here feel free to look it up um, you'll see it up there uh, but those are the correct measurements for a cipher pattern sometimes they're not correctly done up there uh, real quickly on avenger i want to show some stuff that's going on with this kind of a rough day today but i want to show you what's going on with this based off of what we just talked about because i think it's very pertinent oh, some good aftermarket action actually um so right here we we had a beautiful run from here to here and then today eh, boy i think that was some professional stop hunting that was done today i don't know for certain but um, i just think that that's what's going on but look what just happened right here if i measure out this entire first leg if i do a retracement right here my lowest low to my highest high look what level we just hit 382 retracement for whatever reason does not matter whatever reason so hopefully we get price action to come up above and close, break above and close above the highest close, which is going to be right here. And if that happens, what are we looking at? The same exact thing that we talked about with um, Square. I can look at this measured move right here, A to B, and then look at cloning that into a C to D. And then where does that come into play? Uh, I don't know. Look at that. About a dollar two, right at that psychological dollar level. Remember that? You know, psychological numbers play such a big role in the decisions that we make, those nice round numbers. Let's draw an extension right here. Swing low to swing high, back on in. Almost coming up on that 1618 at about a dollar four and putting us uh, right at the bottom of that gap, top of the gap, right, right in that area, right in that zone. So boy, I tell you what, if uh, we can get some action that break above, close above, looks like that about that 69 cent mark, um, that's going to make things very interesting 
based on this uh, 382 retracement to indicate trend continuation. I know for a fact these things got bought up really big right down here as everybody was uh, having an accident in their pants. But um, this is going to be interesting to see what's going to go on with that uh, based from a technical analysis standpoint, but also with uh, earnings reports, which is going to be tomorrow. And um, then we've got the conference, I think, on the 20th. And of course, the big thing everybody's waiting for is the FDA. So anyway, sorry for the long video. I know this was a ton of material. If you like it, please give me a like. I appreciate it. Uh, feel free to subscribe. And uh, if you guys like these videos and explanations, if I'm doing a good job, uh, please let me know. I appreciate it. And I'll keep doing them. And uh, best of luck out there. We've got some good days ahead, I'm sure. And I will best of luck to you. And I'll talk to you later.